Can we all stand together? As we turn to Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, starting verse 21, we're going to read through 28. And if we can, I would like us to read responsibly. I want you, everyone to pay attention to each verse. Pay attention to each verse. Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. We went through these verses Last Sabbath, in Sabbath school, if you study your Sabbath school lesson. And this story always struck me. And God saw fit that when I realized I had to preach, <laughs> this story was on my mind. And it says, Then Jesus went thence and departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon. But he answered her not a word. He answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she crieth after us. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And she said, and, and she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour by the Sea of Galilee. The title of today's sermon is even the dogs eat the crumbs. Right. Even the dogs eat the crumbs. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for being with us right now. Thank you for uh, enabling us to enjoy your presence and to enjoy your holy day of rest. Lord, any time with you is a good time. Any time with you is precious. Lord, I pray that we not take this time with, for granted and that we learn from your teaching. We learn from you and that we take everything that you teach us to heart so that we can be changed. We can be sanctified. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In Matthew 15, verse 22, it describes this woman as a Canaanite, a woman from Canaan. This same story is found in Mark 7. In verse 26, it describes this woman as a Greek Syrophoenician, which is a Gentile that is a Syrian from Phoenicia. Now, during this time, she had two strikes against her. She was a Gentile. According to the Jews, Gentiles were unclean. They were already a lost cause. God would not save them. God is only here for us, the chosen ones. The second strike, to get, a strike against her is that she was a Syrian. As we know, 
the Jews and Syrians did not mesh well together, right? She had a double whammy. Huh? Which makes sense in the story of how the disciples reacted to this woman. By the way, I'm not going to keep you long. This is not a long sermon at all. I think God made me have a short sermon because he knew how the rest of the service was going to be. <laughs> and that his spirit would be moving in this place and it would take its time. What was their reaction to this woman? They saw her as a nuisance. They, they told Jesus to, yeah, this woman is coming over here. We need to avoid her at all costs, okay? We need to send her away. We do not want to be bothered by this heathen. Much like we view panhandlers. Much like we view homeless. Much like we view some who are on the street corner shouting off the top of their lungs the word of God. They're unusual. They are untouchable. They are unclean. They're weirdos. I don't know what they did to get themselves in that situa situation. I said situation. <laughs> Came out of me right there. Don't know what they get to get in that situation. But that's their problem. They need to get themselves together. Hmm? They are getting, this woman was getting in the way of what they wanted to do for the day. These people get in the way of our destination. We got to go here. We got to buy this. We got to do this. I don't have time for them. I. Don't have time for them. They're not kin to me. They're not close to me in any way. So why is it my problem? I had Sister, Sister Chelsea tell that story of when we were in Inner Harbor on purpose. I asked her to tell it. And I'm going to tell it from my point of view. That was her point of view. It's my point of view. We were down there and we were walking, as she said, with uh, my in-laws. And Hayden was small. And uh, friends, old friends of theirs from the old neighborhood that they used to live in, in Baltimore. They got together with them. And there was a woman, a middle-aged woman, that walked up to us, looked unkept. looked perhaps even dirty, asked us very humbly, do you guys have any spare change? I have, you know, I don't have any food in my house for my kids. And what did we all do? Kind of turned our back towards her because we were talking to each other, right? And we were like, uh, no, 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 sorry. Kind of like, hey, keep it moving. Keep it moving. We don't want to be bothered. You're getting in the way of our daily activity. There's me standing there. This born and bred Seventh-day Adventist Christian young man. Standing there. And unfortunately, my thoughts were, as many people's thoughts are, 
she know daggone good well. She ain't got no kids at home. I know what she wants to use what that money for. I know what she wants that money for. I judged her. Then here comes, here comes the newcomer to the faith in the form of Mrs. Chelsea Bowman. And she goes, comes up to me and goes, I don't know, I feel really bad turning her away. We do have a little extra money. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. She'll get money from somebody else. Leave it to somebody else to do it. Hmm? Don't allow God to use me. Leave it for somebody else. Mmm. My toes are hurting. She comes up to me again with tears in her eyes. Not tears in her eyes, tears streaming down. I really feel bad. I think we really need to go find her. And so I go. Here it goes. Now I feel like, I feel like a heartless jerk. <laughs> That's a good thing. Is is. Exactly. It means the Holy Spirit is working on me and I am paying attention and I'm listening. Now, if I didn't feel bad at all, then we got a problem. But I did. So I said in my heart, I didn't say it out loud to my wife, but I said in my heart, Lord, if we find this woman, because she walked away. If anyone's been in a the harbor, they know it's, it could be a crowded place. If we find this woman, I know we are supposed to give her this money. We turn around the corner and there she is. Boom. She's right there. <laughs> like, well, there she is. I'm like, well, here we go. Guess we're supposed to give her this money. We go up to her. We give her the money. Not only do we give her the money, I don't know whose idea it was. I think it might have been Chelsea's to pray with her. Because men cannot live by bread alone. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, sir. So we prayed with her. It's a good thing to have the perfect help me. Hmm? I know, not that I believe, not I believe, I know God sent Chelsea into my life to make me a better servant for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. She keeps me in check, y'all. And, and I do the same for her. Amen. That's, that's, that's Amen. And I'm so grateful for her. And I'm so grateful to God for sending us to one another. Back to the story. Reason I wanted to talk about the inner harbor. Because I want y'all to see what Jesus' reaction to this woman was. What was his reaction at first? Anybody remember? When a woman came to him, he didn't say a word to her. Looked like he straight up ignored her. Hmm? Because that's what was expected. The disciples expected him to do that. You're the Messiah, you're here for us. You're here for us, the Jews. So Jesus was like, I know in his mind, he was like, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to act, I'm going to give you, I'm going to act like I'm not listening to this woman. I'm going to act like what you want, expect me to act like. 
so I could show you the contrast. I could show you the contrast. It's hard to look at ourselves in the mirror sometimes. It's hard when someone holds that mirror right up to our face. So he ignored her. And when he said what he said to her, which is what they expected him to say, I'm not here for you. I ain't here for you. I'm here for the chosen. And went even so far to call her a dog. But in his mind, he was like, watch this. I'm going to show them something. Come on, I'm going to show them something. That's it. I'm going to show them the flip side. Right. And what does she say? This woman who, like Chelsea, was new to the faith, not of the fold. New to the faith. She said, truth. She humbled herself right away. You want to call me a dog? I'm a dog. Truth. Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Me, born and bred, Seventh-day Adventist young man. Did not have as much compassion, have as much faith as, like this woman, my wife, the newcomer to the faith. She had more than me. And she showed it. The crumbs that she's been given so far, she has used. Hmm? This woman showed more faith than those 12 born and bred Jewish young men. Newcomer. Mm. Mm -mm. And I bet when he told her, O oh woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Her prayer is answered right then and there from that moment. And then she realized it when she got home. <laughs> I bet they felt much like I felt when Chelsea put the mirror up to my face. When Jesus put the mirror up to the disciples' face and they saw how selfish and how wicked they were. I bet they felt like I felt, a heartless jerk. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a harsh thing to say about them, but that's how I felt. I felt worse than worse. I felt like a horrible person. There are many souls out there that weren't brought up in the same denomination as we were who weren't raised with, in the same culture as we were, in the same customs as us. They dress differently. They speak differently. They even may smell differently. But because they remain faithful in what they know, to the light that has been given to them thus far, their faith has been rewarded 
time and time and time and time again. Many of them have more faith and a better relationship with God than we do. Yeah, they may still eat things they shouldn't eat. They don't know any better yet. They may still go to church on Sunday. That light hasn't been revealed to them yet. But there were, don't you ever think that your relationship with God is stronger than somebody else's just because of the title you put behind your name. Just because of the of church affiliation you have. In Luke 12, 48, it says, to whosoever much is given, much is required. In John 10, 15 to 17, it says that Jesus died for all who seek him and love him. Not just Seventh Day Adventists. Not just us know-it-alls. Hmm? Because of this, because he died for all of us, we need to put our assumptions about other people aside. Mm -hmm. Our assumptions and our prejudices aside. Acts 10.34, God is no respecter of persons. So why are we? Why are we? Hmm? Christmas and New Year's is supposed to be a time of joy and peace and happiness. Fa la 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 la. <laughs> We should be spreading that joy and peace and happiness, which is God's joy, peace, and happiness all year round. Why do we wait until one season out of a year to have a little more joy? Luke 17, 21, Jesus said, that the kingdom of God is within us. If it is within us, then people should see that kingdom everywhere we go. All the time. 365. 24-7. When people see you, they should feel God's love and God's peace, and God's joy, just from being in your presence. So if God be with us, we need to act like it. And show God's love, peace, and mercy to all, especially to those who are considered unclean and like dogs in our society. Because even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. How many of us are grateful by raise of hands? How many of us are grateful that we have a God that loves us so much that even though we are naked, poor, and filthy, even when we think we're not, Gave his only begotten son to die for our prejudice, for our self-righteousness, for our thirst for power. Aren't you grateful to the only wise God, our Savior, with glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever, who paid the price 
for our sins, even though our righteousness is as filthy rags. I told y'all this sermon was short because I'm at the end. I like to get to the point. <laughs> if you are grateful, Brother Troy, you can start playing. If you're grateful, I invite you to stand with me if you're able in honor and praise to God. Stand with me and meditate on all that he has done for you. You're standing, eyes are closed. We are thinking about all the blessings. We are thinking about in spite of ourselves, all that he has done for us. And we're also thinking about all that we can do for him in our show of gratitude and our show of love. I'm going to sing a song. I want you to listen to the lyrics. And think about all he's done for you. And what can you do for him? In return, a show of your gratitude. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. 
Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise. praise you again and again cause all that I have is ha hallelujah <laughs> and I know it's not much nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.